Have you heard of the protein leverage hypothesis? Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing where, you know, your your body needs a certain amount of protein to to run optimally. And if you're eating, there's been a couple of randomized controlled trials on this. I think it's like Stephen Simpson is one of the, the proponents of it. It was like 2000s or something. And um, that essentially, if you're eating ultra processed foods, which are high in, you know, a lot of refined carbohydrates, low in protein that you overeat to sort of try to yeah. get enough protein. Exactly. So it, it does make sense if your your body is looking for more of micronutrients, more vitamins, more minerals, more protein that you start to overeat. And have you, are you familiar with Kevin Hall's study that he published a couple of years ago? You mean the ultra processed food, where they had 500 calories more? They had 500, yeah. So yeah. for people listening, ultra I mean- Ultra processed food, yeah. Exactly, They're, they had you know two diets. They had a whole foods diet, which was essentially mostly they were getting salads and they were getting poultry and lean meats and um, some fish, oatmeal. Yeah. And then there was the ultra processed foods diet. And, and they were trying to match them for macronutrients. So they were, and... yeah, so they were matched for calories. They were matched for um, total sugar, although the refined, the added sugar and the ultra processed foods group um, was, it was like a huge difference. I mean, it was like something like 70 or 80% versus 1%. So the, sh the sugars in the whole foods diet were coming from fruit, which has a fiber matrix, right? Um, so they were matched for that. Exactly. So the added sugar was not matched, although total sugar was, right? And then protein was somewhat matched. The whole foods had a little bit more protein. It was like something like um, 14, 15.6% in whole foods diet versus 14% in the ultra processed foods diet. Mm. And they were given, so a lot of a lot of things were matched and they were yeah. given these foods, you know, in a sort of metabolic ward where they came yeah. in and eat and they had 60 yeah. minutes to eat the meal ad libitum, right? So they could eat as much or as little as they wanted. Yeah, so you got, you got a big, as much like giant buffet, eat as much as you want. Like you got 60 minutes. Right. And then they did it. And then the group that eat the ultra processed food ate 500 calories more a day. And I just to do the math on that, 500 calories times seven is 3,500 calories. That's one pound of weight gain. So you add that up, that's 52 pounds of weight gain in a year. No yeah. wonder America's overweight. Yeah. Right? I didn't do that math. I know that I just read the results, which was two pounds. They gained two pounds in two weeks, whereas the whole foods diet lost two pounds in two Well, let's say it's two pounds, right? Two weeks, 20. So yep. It's like the, yep. you do the math. It's like, but you add that up over a year and then you add that year over year. It's like, that's why we're seeing this sort of just incredible level of severe obesity and diabetes. And I mean, it's just, you know, the latest data I, I saw was sort of shocking was that 38% of teenagers have prediabetes. Wow. That's like, what? <laughs> I mean, it didn't even exist when I graduated. I'm old, but it didn't exist when I graduated from medical school. Like, we didn't have it. We never saw a kid. There's been studies that have looked at, like, healthy individuals, and they've given them, um, they're actually young men, they, give, they gave them a 20-ounce sugar-sweetened beverage, sort of akin to, like, a soda, Coke or something. And they did this for three weeks. And after that three-week mark, their C-reactive protein biomarker for inflammation went up 100%. They are um, small, dense LDL. So this is these are lipoproteins that are the transporting. Bad. Yeah, they're the ones that are causing more heart disease. Exactly, causing more atherosclerosis. They went up as well. Um, this was just after three weeks, you know, and eating healthy, of, food. of of a sugar sweetened beverage, which is the ultimate, <laughs> right? That's the ultimate. 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 Yeah, ultra processed. But yeah. but the reality is, is but that it's gluten free. It's gluten free, yes, but it's definitely <laughs> it's causing inflammation, massive inflammation at the level of the gut, um, and so. You, you can take healthy people and dramatically change their profile within a matter of weeks of, of having, you know, this ultra processed foods, these sugar sweetened beverages, you know, which again, like. And they deplete nutrients because I think people don't realize that one, you're not getting them, but two, you're, you actually need nutrients to actually run your biochemistry. And so you're trying to burn these calories and burn the food, but you're actually depleted in the very nutrients required to run them metabolic pathways to actually metabolize the food so you're kind of you know getting it like from both sides hit. yeah like a two hit yeah 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 so again it's it comes down to i think you know thinking about why you need to eat is so important because then it's like I, I need to get micronutrients i need to get my my fiber i need to get protein when i say fiber carbohydrates right but it needs to be carbohydrates yeah. in the form of yeah fruits and vegetables which have the micronutrients and the nuts fiber and right seeds and, and nuts and seeds yeah and oats um and then, and then avoiding ultra processed foods. I think, I think if people were to do that and think about eating that way, and then you have to move, right? You have to be physically active. Being sedentary is a disease. 